President and the Senators of the, of the Republic of the Philippines. The ninth session of the Senate, the first regular session of the 19th Congress, is hereby called to order. Senator Wayne Gachalian will lead this chamber in prayer. Bow our heads and pray. Nakilang Diyos, salamat po sa araw na ito na ipinagkaloob mo. Maraming salamat po sa oportunidad na magkaisa kaming mga mamabatas upang maisulong ang maadikain para sa ikaunlad ng aming bansa. Patuloy mo po kaming gabayan, Panginoon, upang marinig ang boses ng aming mga kababayan at aksyonan ang kanilang mga pangangailangan. Sa ganitong paraan, Mamumuhay ang lahat ng masaya, ligtas, at maginhawa. We humbly ask for grace, strength, and wisdom as we legislators make decisions and lead our countrymen, most especially now that we are faced with calamities and crises affecting public health and our economy. We pray that by your amazing grace, the increasing cases of COVID-19 come to an end. We also claim our healing and recovery of our kababayans who have been effect, infected. May your wisdom be upon the global leaders and health experts in containing the spread of COVID-19 and the monkeypox disease. By faith, we are confident in your power and glorious name. Our beloved nation and the whole world will overcome these. May your word serve as a lamp to our feet and a light to our path in today's session. This is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Secretary, may please call the roll. Thank you. Roll call of members. The Honorable Senator Angara. Senator Binay. Senator Cayetano Alan. Present. Senator Cayetano Pia. Senator De La Rosa. Thank you. Senator Ejercito. Senator Escudero. Senator Estrada. Senator Gachalian, Senator Go, Senator Antiveros, Senator Lapid, Senator Ligarda, Senator Marcos, Senator Padilla, Senator Pimentel, Senator Poe, Senator Revilla, Senator Tolentino, Senator Tulfo, Senator Villanueva, Senator Villar Cynthia. Senator Villar Mark, the Senate President. With 19 senators physically present and three senators virtually present with the presence of 22 senators, the chair declares a quorum. Mr. President, at this juncture, I move that we dispense with the reading of the journal of the seventh session, Monday, August 8, 2022, and consider the same as approved. I so move, Mr. President. Is there any objection to the manifestation of the motion of this majority floor leader of Dan, the motion is approved. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, at this juncture, may we acknowledge some guests from the gallery, guests of our uh, dear colleague, Senator Bongo, Mayor Irene Maniques Binyan of Iba Sambales, Board Member Jun Rundi Ebdani, Councillor Margie Maniques Noveno, and Councillor Gani Yap, also guests of our dear colleague, Senator J.B. Ejercito, Mayor Celsa Rivera of Padre Garcia Batangas, and the uh, uh, rest of LGU officials, together with Vice Mayor Miko Rivera. And uh, last but not the least, Mr. President, we, uh, sorry, Mr. President, 
Uh, also, the guest of our minority leaders, Mayor Tata Sala of uh, Davao del Sur. And last but not the least, Mr. President, uh, we are honored to have with us the PNP chief, uh, Rodolfo Azurin, and the entire PNP contingent. So we welcome them in the House of uh, uh, the Senate. Yes. Uh, welcome to your Senate, uh, ladies and gentlemen. May I ask for a minute suspension? Majority yes, Mr. Here. President. Move for one minute suspension. Session suspended. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we defer with the approval of the journal of the 8th session, Tuesday, August 9, 2022, as it is still uh, being finalized. So moved, Mr. President. Is there an objection? There being none, the motion of the majority floor leader is hereby approved. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we proceed with the reference of business. Secretary, proceed with the reference of business. Bills on first reading. Senate number 401, establishing a national comprehensive housing financing program, providing for the annual automatic appropriation of funds and for other purposes, Senator Tolentino. For the committees on urban planning, housing, resettlement, waste and means and finance. 402, providing for a mandatory basic military and police training program in all senior high school levels in public and private educational institutions, Senator Tolentino. Referred to the committees on basic education, arts, culture, national defense, and finance. 403, establishing a special hospital for teachers and their depend dependents, converting the East Avenue Medical Center in Diliman, Quezon City, into the National Teachers Medical Center, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes, Senator Tolentino. For the committees on health, basic education, ways and means and finance. 404, renaming the Benham Rice as Philippine Rice or Talampas ng Pilipinas, naming the undersea features therein and for other purposes, Senator Tolentino. For the committees on environment, natural resources, and foreign relations. 405, institutionalizing the mandatory use of the name West Philippine Sea or Kanluran Dagat ng Pilipinas, to refer to the marine areas on the western side of the Philippines and for other purposes, Senator Tolentino. For the Committee on Foreign Affairs. 406, providing incentives to pharmaceutical companies engaged in the domestic manufacture of pediatric vaccines and medicines, amending for the purpose Section 109 of the NIRC of 1997 as amended, Senator Tolentino. For the Committee on Ways and Means. 407, expanding the basic education curriculum increasing the functions of the Bureau of Learning Delivery under the Department of Education to include distance education and online learning, thereby amending RA10533 and for other purposes, Senator Tolentino. Further committees on basic education and higher technical vocational education. 408, amending RA72160 by amending, expanding the scope of local government units power over local public transportation systems and, and for other purposes, Senator Tolentino. Further to committees on local government and public services. 409, providing for the modernization and capability enhancement of the Philippine National Police, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes, Senator Marcos. Further to committees on public order, ways and means of finance. 410, modernizing the Bureau of Immigration, defining its powers and functions, expanding, rationalizing, and further professionalizing its organization, upgrading the compensation and benefits of officials and employees, appropriating funds, therefore, Senator Marcos. Further to committees on justice, civil service, and finance. 411, providing for government financial institutions unified initiatives to distress enterprises for economic re recovery. Senator Marcos. Further committees on banks, government corporations, ways and means and finance. 412, an act to promote reforestation and to increase wood production through the establishment of three growing agreements. Senator Marcos. Refer to the committees on environment, ways and means and finance. 413, an act to establish the forest cadastre, providing for its procedures and for other purposes. Senator Marcos. Further Committees on Environment and Finance. 414, strengthening RA11165, introduced by Senator Marcos. Further Committees on Labor and Employment. 415, an act amending Presidential Decree Number 194, and for other purposes, by Senator Marcos. Further Committees on Agriculture, Trade, and Commerce. 416, an act amending Section 5 of RA 4726 and for other purposes by Senator Marcos. For the Committee on Urban Planning and Housing. 417, an act amending RA 8550 and for other purposes, Senator Marcos. For the Committee on Agriculture and Food. 418, an act amending RA 6938 as amended and for other purposes, Senator Marcos. For the Committee on Cooperatives. 419, instituting the Magna Carta of Benefits for the Officers and Personnel of the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, Senator Go. Further to committees on public order and finance. 420, providing for rural employment assistance program and appropriating funds therefore, Senator Go. Further to committees on justice, social justice rather, labor and employment and finance. 421, institutionalizing an emergency medical services system, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes, Senator Go. Further to committees on health and demography, local government and finance. 422, providing free legal assistance to any officer or, or enlisted personnel of the armed forces of the Philippines and the Philippine National Police 
on any charge before the prosecutor's office, court, or any competent body arising from an incident or incidents related to the performance of official duty, Senator Go. For two, Miso National Defense, Public Order, and Finance. For two, three, institutionalizing the Philippine National Games and appropriating funds therefore, Senator Go. For two, the Committees on Sports and Finance. For two, four, promoting the one town, one product concept to, in, to enhance inclusive and sustainable economic development, appropriating funds therefore, for other purposes, Senator Go. For two, Committees on Trade and Commerce, Local Government and Finance. For two, five, Strengthening the Insurance Commission and, and reorganizing it into a collegial body, amending PD612 as amended, otherwise known as the Insurance Code, Senator Go. Referred to the committees on banks and financial institutions, rather, yes, banks and financial institutions. 426, providing for a national housing development production and financing program, regularizing its appropriation for its implementation, Senator Go. Referred to committees on urban planning and housing, sustainable development goals, Ways and Means and Finance. 427, mandating the appointment of barangay health workers in barangays, providing for their duties and responsibilities, compensation and benefits for other purposes, Senator Go. Referred to committees on health, demography, local government and finance. 428, providing for the establishment and support of a drug abuse treatment and rehabilitation center in every province throughout the Philippines, appropriating <coughs> funds therefore, Senator Go. Referred to committees on public order, dangerous drugs, health, demography and finance. 429, Eradicating mobile phone, internet, or electronic communication aided criminal activities, mandating for this purpose <coughs> ownership registration of all subscriber identity module SIM cards for electronic devices, Senator De La Rosa. Referred to the committees on public service, the trade and commerce entrepreneurship. 430, providing for a Magna Carta of tricycle drivers and operators, institutionalizing mechanisms for its implementation for other purposes, Senator De La Rosa. Referred to the committees on public service and local government. 431, providing for the rank classification and organization of key positions in the Bureau of Fire Protection and Bureau of Jail Management and Penology, amending for the purpose RA 9263 and for other purposes by Senator De La Rosa. Referred to committees on public order and dangerous drugs, civil service, and finance. 432, providing incentive allowance to public school teachers who are assigned outside of their cities, municipalities, and provinces, appropriating funds therefore for other purposes, Senator De La Rosa. Further committees on basic education, ways and means to finance. 433, providing for incentives and benefits for healthcare workers in the private sector, appropriating funds therefore for other purposes, Senator De La Rosa. Further committees on health, demography, labor and employment, and finance. 434, mandating the appointment of barangay health workers and barangays, providing for their duties and responsibilities, compensation and benefits, and for other purposes, Senator De La Rosa. Further committees on health and demography, local government, ways and means to finance. 435, Providing for security of tenure for all casual and contractual employees of the government who have rendered the prescribed years of service in the national government and local government units and for other purposes, Senator De La Rosa. Referred to the Committee on Civil Service and Government to your organization. 436, mandating law enforcement personnel to use a badly worn camera during law enforcement operations, providing funds therefore for other purposes, Senator De La Rosa. Referred to committees on public order, dangerous drugs and finance. 437, requiring business establishment to install closed circuit television cameras in their place or uh, place of business as a means to deter crime, Senator De La, De La Rosa. Further committees on trade and commerce and public order and dangerous drugs. 438, creating the Department of Disaster Resilience, defining its powers and functions, appropriating funds therefore, Senator De La Rosa. Further committees on national defense, civil service, and finance. 439. <laughs> And ways and means also, rather. 439, institutionalizing the Build, Build, Build program, Senator Villar M. Further committees on economic affairs, public works, and finance. 440, establishing the National Cancer Center of the Philippines, appropriating funds therefore, Senator Villar M. Further committees on health, demography, ways and means, and finance. 441, providing all barangay officials, including barangay tunnels and members of the Lupon ng Tagapa Mayapa, a lump sum gratuity pay and other benefits, amending for the purpose section 393 of RA 716T, introduced by Senator Villar M. Further, the local committee on local government, ways and means of finance. 442, penalizing discriminatory actions based on gender identity or expression and sexual orientation, Senator Villar M. Further, committees on women and children, family relations and finance. 443, establishing free on site living facilities for public teachers, providing funds therefore and for other purposes, Senator Villar M. Further committees on urban planning and housing, public works and finance. 444, providing for the employment of at least one registered nurse for every barangay and for other purposes, Senator Villar M. Further committees on health and demography, local government and finance.
445, requiring all government agencies to indicate the blood type of all individuals in all identification cards, certificates, and licenses. Senator Villar M. For the Committees on Health and Demography, Civil Service, uh, and Finance. 446, mandating all government offices to use renewable energy, appropriating funds therefore, Senator Villar M. For the Committees on Energy, Civil Service, and Finance. 447, instituting budget reform that will ensure the equitable distribution of funds among the national and local government units for the purpose of local development, appropriating funds therefore for other purposes, Senator Padilla. For the Committees on Local Government Finance. 448, to establish a nursing home for senior citizens and appropriating funds therefore, Senator Padilla. For the Committees on Social Justice, Local Government and Finance. 449, institutionalizing civil unions of same-sex couples, establishing their rights and obligations for other purposes, Senator Padilla. For the Committees on Women and Children, Family Relations and Ways and Means. 450, protecting the welfare of workers or independent contractors in the film, television, and radio entertainment industry, Senator Padilla. For the Committee on Labor and Employment, Public Information, and Mass Media. There's an additional reference. Mandating the inclusion of Philippine history as a separate subject in the high school curriculum, Senator Padilla. For the Committee on Basic Education, Arts and Culture. 452, declaring September 21 of every year a special non-working holiday to be known as Unsung Heroes Day, Senator Padilla. For the Committee on National Defense and Security. 453, postponing the December 2022 Barangay in Sangguniang, Sangguniang Kabataan elections, amending for the purpose RA9164 as amended and for other purposes, Senator Estrada. For the Committee on Electoral Reforms, Local Government and Finance. 454, mandating the establishment, management, maintenance, and regulation of a rainwater harvesting facility in all new institutional, commercial, industrial, and residential development projects in Metro Manila, Senator Estrada. For the Committee on Public Works. 455, establishing the e-government, defining its powers and functions for other purposes, Senator Estrada. For the Committee on Science and Technology, Public Information, and Mass Media. 456, establishing greater responsibility and accountability from private employment agencies, amending for the purpose RA10361 by Senator Estrada. For the Committee on Labor and Employment. 457, strengthening the inspection function of the Department of Labor and Employment, amending for this purpose RA6727 and for other purposes, Senator Estrada. For the Committee on Labor and Employment. 458, amending Article 123 of PD442 as amended by requiring the regional board to issue a wage order every year on explanation for not issuing such wage order, Estrada, Senator Estrada. For the Committee on Labor and Employment. 459, increasing the penalties for non-compliance of the pre prescribed increases and adjustments in the wage rates of workers, amending for the purpose RA6727 and for other purposes by Senator Estrada. For the Committee on Labor and Employment. 460, providing for occupational safety and health standards for the workers and talents in the movie and television industry by Senator Estrada. For the Committee on Labor and Employment. 461, providing enhanced protection, security, and benefits for media and entertainment workers, Senator Estrada. For the Committees on Labor and Employment, Public Information, and Mass Media. 462, establishing the archipelagic sea lanes in the Philippine archipelagic waters, prescribing the rights and obligations of foreign ships and aircraft, exercising the right of archipelagic sea lanes passage through the established archipelagic sea lanes, providing for the associated protected measures therein, Senator Estrada. For the Committees on Foreign Relations and Finance. 463, establishing a rental subsidy program for informal settler families, appropriating funds therefore for other purposes, Senator Estrada. Mm -hmm. For the Committees on Urban Planning and Housing, Social Justice, and Finance. 464, ensuring the occupational health, safety, and welfare of business process out outsourcing workers and other similarly situated professionals, Senator Estrada. For the Committee on Labor and Employment. 465, providing for the construction of a multi-purpose gym in all municipalities and cities to serve as evacuation center during times of calamity or disaster and appropriating funds therefore, Senator Estrada. For the Committees on Public Works and Finance. 466, establishing the agriculture, agriculture information system in all cities and municipalities, Senator Estrada. For to the committees on agriculture, food, local government, and finance. 467, strengthening the wildlife conservation and protection mechanism in the Philippines, amending for this purpose RA91047, providing funds, therefore, and for other purposes, Senator Estrada. For the Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, Sustainable Development Goals, Ways and Means of Finance. 468, strengthening the citizen armed forces of the Philippines, reinstituting for the purpose a mandatory reserve officer training core program in the curriculum of all undergraduate, degree, diploma, certificate, or technical vocational programs in public 
and private tertiary level educational <coughs> institutions, appropriating funds, therefore, for other purposes, Senator Estrada. Further committees on higher technical vocational education, national defense and security, and finance. 469, an act to provide incentives for the private sector to undertake rental residential housing at rates affordable to low and middle income families and for other purposes, Senator Estrada. Committees on Urban Planning and Housing, Social Justice and Welfare, and Ways and Means. 470, institutionalizing anti-drug abuse councils in every province, city, and municipality and for other purposes, Senator Estrada. For the Committee on Public Order, Dangerous Drugs, and Local Government. 471, enabling banks to expand service delivery channels through cash agents and providing guidelines, therefore, Senator Estrada. For the Committee on Banks and Financial Institutions. 472, establishing a safe pathways network of bicycle lanes and slow streets and for other purposes, Senator Estrada. To the Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, Public Works, and Finance. 473, renaming the Literacy Coordinating Council to the National Liter Literacy Council, strengthening its powers and functions, streamlining its membership structure, providing its local support mechanisms, repealing for the purpose RA 7165 as amended, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes. For Senator the Gachalian. Refer to means of basic education and culture and finance. 474, mandating the provision of one laptop for every learner enrolled under K-12 program of the Department of Education, escalating the provision of reliable and secure internet connection for the use of such lap laptops, appropriating funds, therefore, for other purposes, Senator Gachalian. Further means on basic education, science, technology, ways and means of finance. 475, institutionalizing a national reading month in November of every year, providing for multi-stakeholder participation in the inculcation of a culture of reading in basic education, appropriating funds and for other purposes, Senator Gachalian. Further committees on basic education, ways and means of finance. 476, promoting the establishment of public math and science high schools in previously underserved areas and appropriating funds, therefore, Senator Gachalian. Further committees on basic education, local government, and finance. 477, digitizing all books <coughs> necessary for public education and establishing a Philippine online library, providing funds, therefore, and for other purposes, Senator Gachalian. For two meetings on basic education, science and technology, and finance. 478, mandating the automation of a national public school database, Senator Gachalian. For the Committee on Basic Education, Arts, and Culture. 479, requiring the completion of an economics and personal finance literacy course as an elementary, secondary, tertiary, and technical vocational graduation requirement in public and private schools, local universities and colleges, state and private colleges and universities, and technical vocational schools and centers mandating professional development for EPF teachers teaching financial literacy to e EPF partners, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes, Senator Gachalian. For the Committee on Basic Education, Higher Technical Vocational Education and Finance. 480, establishing a national high school in Barangay Mabka, municipality of Sangnay, province of Cabarines Sur, to be known as the Mabka National High School and appropriating funds, therefore, Re Senator Gachalian. Refer to meeting the rules. 481, converting the Hibaon Elementary School in Barangay Hibaon Sur, Manduriao District, Iloilo City, into an integrated school to be known as Hibaon Integrated School and appropriating funds, therefore, Senator Gachalian. Refer to meeting the rules. 482, separating the Vitali National High School, Sinoropan Annex, Barangay Licomo, Sambuanga City, from the Vitali National High School, converting it into an independent national high school to be known as Sinoropan National High School, appropriating funds, therefore, Senator Gachalian. For the median rules. 483, enhancing the competitive selection process for power supply agreements in the electric power sector, Senator Gachalian. For the median energy. 484, institutionalizing reforms in the competitive selection process of power supply agreements for the captive market of electric power sector, Senator Gachalian. For two million energy. 485, enhancing the implementation of the net metering program, amending for the purpose RA9513 by Senator Gachalian. For two million energy. 486, removing the public offering requirement of generation companies, amending for the purpose section 43T, 43T of RA9136, Senator Gachalian. For the Committee on Energy and Public Services. 487, an act enhancing the governance structure of the Energy Regu Regulatory Commission, Senator Gachalian. For the Committee on Energy, Civil Service, and Professional Regulation. 488, declaring April 7 of every year as Barangay Health Workers Day to be known as BHW Day, Senator Legarda. For the Committee on Health and Demography and Local Government. 489, Establishing the Philippine Virology Science and Technology Institute and appropriating funds, therefore, Senator Legarda. For the Committee on Science and Technology and Finance. 490, 
establishing the Department of Culture, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes, Senator De Garda. For the Committees on Basic Education, Arts and Culture, Gov uh, Civil Service, and Finance. 491, providing for urban and, and countryside greening in the Philippines through mandatory tree planting and, uh, and adoption of a forest sanctuary by public schools under the Department of Education, Senator De Garda. For the Committees on Environment, Natural Resources, Basic Education, Arts and Culture, and Finance. 492, institutionalizing Philippine participation in the international exhibitions of the Venice Biennial, Senator De Garda. For the Committees on Basic Education, Arts and Culture, Foreign Relations and Finance. 493, strengthening the Farm to Market Development Program and pro providing for a sustained regular funding support to accelerate its implementation, Senator De Garda. For the Committees on Agriculture, Food, Public Works and Finance. 494, creating the Environmental Protection and Enforcement Bureau under the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, providing for its powers and functions, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes, Senator De Garda. For the Committees on Civil Service, Environment, Natural Resources, and Finance. 495, exempting incentives, rewards, bonuses, and other forms of emoluments received by the national athletes and coaches from taxes, amending for the purpose RA10699 by Senator De Garda. For the Committees on Sports and Ways and Means. 496, providing enhanced protection, security, and benefits for media workers, Senator De Garda. For the Committees on Labor and Employment. Public information mass media. 497, providing for a framework to protect and promote right to adequate food, Senator De Garda. Further committees on justice and human rights, sustainable development goals, and finance. 498, establishing the Philippine Defense University system for other purposes, Senator De Garda. Further committees on national defense, um, higher technical vocational education, and finance. 499, an act to revive the restaurant industry for a post COVID 19 economy and ensure the transition to a better normal, Senator De Garda. Further committees on trade and commerce, ways and means and finance. 500, providing emergency food subsidy to every poor Filipino family affected by the quarantine protocols and appropriating funds therefore by Senator De Garda. Further committee on social justice and welfare and finance. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, may I move uh, for uh, one Senate? Uh, Before, minute, uh, uh, would you want to listen? Ah, okay. So, for, for, after? for our caucus, Mr. Mr. President, because okay. a lot of our... So uh, the speech of our lady senator will be done after? After, Mr. Right. President. Therefore, we have we move for a one-minute, one-senate minute, one minute, minute suspension. Thank you, Mr. President.
Yes, Mr. President. I, uh, the, uh, the, uh, we, we would like to uh, uh, report to the public of, of uh, what we have discussed and what transpired during our uh, all members <coughs> caucus at the Senate lunch, perhaps. Yes. And, uh, Mr. Uh, President, if please. I may, uh, Majority Leader. Please. And uh, I would like Senator Pia Caetano to see that I did not have a printed copy. It's online. I, <laughs> we <laughs> Let it be put on record that Senator <laughs> Cayetano is uh, flapping, flapping her hand. Her hand. <laughs> that finally it's uh, paperless. And it's soundless. And it's soundless, soundless. Mr. President. This is a paperless uh, <laughs> uh, information sheet. Due to the, well, ladies and gentlemen, my dear colleagues, uh, due to the rising COVID-19 cases the last in the last week where we had three of our colleagues testing positive for COVID-19, during our caucus, the senators decided to tighten our health and safety protocols. In addition to the existing protocols, we will be implementing the following additional guidelines for the information of our dear colleagues and for the general public. Uh, effective Monday, August 15, for three weeks, we will have a lockdown for guests. We'll receive uh, no guests for three weeks except for resource persons which will be limited to two per agency or organization. The others could participate remotely. So um, let me repeat, we will have a lockdown for the next three weeks. We will receive no guests for, th for these three weeks, except for resource persons during committee hearings. And they'll be limited also uh, to uh, accompanying members of the resource persons. Because means that the resource person is going uh, kasamahan. So, kung pwede, we limit it to two uh, accompanying uh, members of uh, this uh, delegation or organization. Number two, the resource person should, should present a negative RT-PCR test result with QR code taken within 24 hours of your meeting in the Senate or an antigen, a negative antigen test within 12 hours, within the day, uh, from any DOH accredited facility. Self-administered antigen test results without any valid certification shall not be accepted. Uh, for the committee hearings, each senator may be assisted with two members of his or her staff, except for the chairperson of the committee who will obviously need a bit more staff to assist. For session duties, we will retain the two staff per senator rule. Uh, we don't want to happen what had happened the last previous uh, Monday and the previous weeks where the whole plenary was full of uh, staff, uh, your honors. And so we will uh, appeal to our colleagues and it was the agreement during the caucus that we will only have two staff per senator rule for the plenary. And for the elevators, we shall implement a strict five person limitation rule on the elevators, so that hindi po tayo magkaroon ng uh, uh, yung pagsisikip sa loob ng elevator. So those were uh, the things that we discussed, majority floor leader, and we beg the indulgence of the general public. It's just kung hindi po natamaan mga senador, ang masama dito ay sunod-sunod po ang pagtama sa ating mga kasamahan sa senado, and we just want to be safe. We have uh, members with comorbidities, we have staff with comorbidities, and according to the DOH and OCTA research, uh, uh, according to them, the cases will peak in the next two weeks. So maybe we can give ourselves a bit of a, a safety net for the next three weeks, at least here in the Senate. A majority leader, I believe, the, uh, our distinguished Thank colleague you. from Taguig and Pateros yes, would like uh, to Yes, Mr. President, I move that uh, she be recognized, uh, Mr. President. Um, Senator Cayetano, you're recognized, ma'am. Yes. Thank you, Mr. President. I think that was very clear. Uh, dagdagan ko lang for further clarity, kasi dati, pag binanggit yung lockdown, tayo yung walang session, di ba? Liwanagin natin, no, na Apo. it is, agree we have agreed that we will be here, di ba? Yes. We will be here. Yung guests yes. lang naman ang nilimit natin for the safety of everyone para we can perform our job better. Yeah, for, for, for a few weeks, no? And then, Mr. President, upon clarification nga sa atin ng ating medical team nga, Yung marami palang nakapaligid dyan, hindi pala yan yung media natin. Ano, mukhang mga personal photographer staff, staff yes. din ng mga senador. So, no problem. As I said naman, eh, 
We understand that we all have a job to do, pero yung request nga natin is mabawasan. So like I also said in caucus, na obviously kung uh, nagpe-privileged speech or merong mga uh, debates na, then syempre this, per, this, this form part of the staff of the, for documentation purpose. And I have no problem nandyan. Problema lang yung talagang napuno yan, ang mga 20 yata sila doon. That's the only time yes. we, we would say na kailangan, uh, ano tayo, mag-ingat tayo. Yun lang, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Madam uh, uh, Senator Pia Caetano. And yes, for the record, papasok po tayong lahat. Yung exempted lang sa pagpasok natin dito sa plenaryo ay yung mga may uh, COVID, yung may uh, symptoms, and uh, you my close contact that they will be allowed to uh, avail of the hybrid system. Senator Tolentino, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I was supposed to ask this during our first uh, session day, but apparently I was not around. Uh, it has something to do with what you discussed probably in, during your caucus. So in effect, Mr. President, this is a parliamentary inquiry. The recent pronouncement of, of uh, the leader, Senate leadership is that for the next three weeks, we will be holding a hybrid session with those COVID-infected members of this chamber attending virtually. Am I That's, correct, Mr. That President? That is correct. So my, my uh, inquiry, Mr. President, is this. Would that mean a revival of the previous Congress's resolution authorizing a hybrid session similar to what the lower house did when when the lockdown was first enforced for three weeks actually it was not the resolution your honor it's already in the rules we amended the rules of the yes. senate to allow the the body will allow, will allow such hybrid sessions in this case it is the hybrid of the hybrid because we're having hybrid sessions only for those members who have COVID-19 and those who have uh, uh, symptoms as well as exposure. But uh, for the rest who have none, like ourselves, uh, we must attend physically. Yeah, yes, J just for the record, Mr. President, the reason why I rose on a parliamentary inquiry is because, and I, 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 I see uh, the good minority leader probably would concur with this, is that the Constitution provides that there should only be one Senate sitting in one, in one plenary. This was my speech before, because if we go in, in 24 different ways, we will, have, we will have 24 Senates. So Mr. President, I, my inquiry again is that we are not reinstating the old rule, but we are having a hybrid of the hybrid. Yes, that so, is correct. And the duration is just for three weeks. Yes, that's correct. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Mr. President, the uh, minority leader is seeking the floor. I move that he be recognized, Mr. Senator Cochran himself. Yes, uh, our distinguished minority so that we floor will, leader. We will really be uh, uh, clear about this. The, the holding of a hybrid session is authorized by our rules. Is that correct, uh, Mr. President? Will yes, the under Section 40. Yeah, for, uh, Section yes. four, 41, rather. Yes. So, yes. so anjan pa yan. Opo. Okay. So, and then uh, by uh, unanimous consent, we are, we are agreeing that we will uh, physically, we will not avail of that rule. That is correct. We suspended the rule. No, not suspended the rule. Yes, uh, we, so, yeah. yes, Mr. President. So it is there. The rule is there. We are not availing of the of the rule, and yet since uh, it became reality that some of the members got infected, and uh, since we have already devised this system that we can still attend by by uh, online uh, connection. We have allowed this for those who are positive, That's correct. those who are uh, who have been exposed to a positive person, That's correct. and those who exhibit uh, symptoms related to COVID-19. 
Mm-hmm. And this is not only for the three weeks. Kasi no, na, no, not yes, only for nasa, the three yes. weeks. So, yun po yun. That's correct. So, yun po yung klaro. It's, it will always be there. Yes, sir. Uh, once na pumasok po tayo sa ganun. We just have a heightened uh, uh, quarantine response now with the uh, moratorium on the guests for correct, the three correct. weeks. Yes. So, yes. ganun po yun. And then, uh, in my opinion, we are having... We're having one Senate session. And yes. Yes, only one Senate session. And then yes, we have one also Senate present uh, online. Uh, Mr. That's President. correct. So, Mr. President, if I may be recognized again. Yes, Senator Tolentino uh, is recognized. Just to uh, respond to the implied query of the good minority leader. My, my original parliamentary in- inquiry would refer to the previous, uh, previous Congresses resolution that we go on a hybrid in in consultation with the House. So, Mr. President, is the recent decision, was the recent decision pronounced by the Senate leadership today done in consultation with the House? It's, not, necessar- it's not necessary, Your Honor. Yeah, because the House is, in, is independent from the Senate in terms of running no, its Mr. rules. No, Mr. President, what I'm referring to <coughs> is a constitutional provision requiring both houses, both houses to consult each other if they would go into a different session. If they, if they will not hold their session in their current session halls. Would, would, the, would the virtual session amount, amount to a compliance or non-compliance with that constitutional provision? Uh, with my discussions with the Secretariat, we are one Senate conducting one session with some members participating online. So yes. we, are, we are conducting yes. one session. That's, that's, compliant that's, my, to the that, that's my inquiry, Mr. President. Yes. <coughs> we are uh, always in consonant with that constitutional <coughs> provision. I forgot the exact uh, section and article. I think the the constitution provides that if you are going to hold session in not in your normal venue, or if you're going to extend a couple of days longer than the other yes. house, you have to you have to, you have to coordinate uh, with the you have house to coordinate. So I don't think the said uh, provision is applicable to our situation. Yes, and it's uh, section. We just take a look at section 41. And then, uh, look, tignan natin yung uh, effectivity naman nito. Sabi ng rules natin, effective until uh, yes. amended or repealed. Nakasunat doon sa, du- yes. sa dulo. At the end of the rules, gano'n naman. Yes. So it's here. So, so, claro, the legal basis is Section 41. Uh, it still is in force because sabi natin sa rules natin, once effective, always effective unless... Repealed yes. and or uh, amended. Um, yes. S- Subject again, Mr. President, to your three-week duration. Uh, no, no, actually, think, the rule 41, section 41 of our rules is is already part and parcel of our rules. So the, so three, the three-week period pronounced earlier The three-week period is a special period for the visitors, for the visitors oh, only. Visitors. Yes. Visitors. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very yes, much, Your the Honor. The good minority leader became the majority leader in, uh, in uh, <laughs> clarifying all of this. <laughs> well, just want to put on record, Mr. President, that we are not changing the rules. It's still here. It's still the same. And uh, the, uh, the outcome of the, the, the caucus is just to limit the guests here inside yes. the plenary session. Yes. So with that, uh, Mr. President, uh, and with the... Uh, uh, consent of the body, pursuant, Mr. President, to Rule 10, Section 13 in relation to Section 18 of the Senate Rules. I now move that we proceed with the continuation of the organization of the various standing committees of the Senate by electing the chairperson. And so, Mr. President, uh, I move that we uh, continue with the nomination of chairperson of various committees. So move, Mr. President. Is there any objection to the motion of the Majority Floor Leader? If there is none, the motion is approved. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, for the Committee on Justice and Human Rights with nine members, Mr. President, I move to elect Senator Francis Tolentino as chairperson of the committee with the following members. 
On the part of majority, Senator Sani Angara as Vice Chairperson, Senator Bato De La Rosa, Senator Robin Hood Padilla, Senator J.V. Ercito, Senator Mark Villar, Senator Bongo, Senator Chis Escudero, and on the part of the minority, Deputy Minority Leader, Senator Risa Ondiveros. I so move, Mr. President. If there's no objection to the most of the majority floor leader, all these mentioned, aforementioned names are hereby elected as members of the committee. And the chairperson, uh, Mr. President. And the chairperson. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, for the Committee on Cultural Communities with seven members, Mr. President, I move to elect Senator Robin Hood Padilla. Before you move, isn't it uh, going to be amended to the Committees on Cultural Communities yes, and Mr. President. Muslim Affairs? Yes, Mr. President. The, uh, the uh, hearing uh, just ended yesterday, and we will file the resolution on Monday, Mr. Okay. President. So, so forthcoming yung pagpalit. Yes. Ng, uh, uh, so for today, Mr. President, yes. we are uh, uh, electing uh, the chairperson and its members of the Committee on Cultural Communities. Again, uh, Mr. President, I move to elect Senator Robin Hood Padilla as chairperson and the following as members. On the part of the majority, Senator Aimee Marcos as vice chairperson, Senator Francis Tolentino, Senator Bongo, Senator Bato De La Rosa, Senator Sani Angara, and for the minority, Senator Risa Ontiveros. I so move, Mr. President. If there is no objection to the most of the minor majority floor leader, therefore those aforementioned names are hereby elected as members of the committee, including the chairperson. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that, uh, with the permission of the body, I move that we nominate and elect the members of the Senate Committee on Committee on, Committee on Accountability of Public Officers and Investigations. Uh, Mr. President, uh, the chairperson of this committee is Senator <coughs> Francis Tolentino. Mr. President, for the members of the majority, I move to elect uh, Senator... Senator Bato De La Rosa, Senator Bongo, Senator Alan Peter Cayetano as vice chairpersons, uh, with members Senators Pia Cayetano, Sani Angara, Win Gachelian, Bong Revilla, Mark Villar, Jingoy Estrada, Aimi Marcos, Rafi Tulfo, JV Ejercito, Grace Paul, Lito Lapid, Robin Hood Padilla, and on the part of the minority, Senator Risa Ondiveros. I so move, Mr. President. If there is no objection to the motion of the majority floor leader, all aforementioned names are hereby elected to the said committee. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we nominate and elect the members of the Senate Committee on Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship. The chairperson of this committee is Senator Mark Villar. Mr. President, for the members of the majority on the committee, on uh, trade, commerce, and entrepreneurship. On the part of the majority, move to elect Senators Nancy Binay and Rafi Tulfo as vice chairpersons, with members of the majority, Senators Cincha Villar, Bato De La Rosa, Win Gachalian, Pia Cayetano, Christopher Lawrence Bongo, and the part of the minority, Senator Risa Ondiveros. I so move, Mr. President. If there is no objection to the motion of the majority floor leader, all the aforementioned names are hereby elected as members of the Committee on Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we nominate and elect the members of the Senate Committee on Banks, Financial Institutions, and Currencies. Um, the chairperson of this committee is Senator Mark Villar. Uh, Mr. President, for the members of the majority, I move to elect Senators Gatchalian Angara as vice chairpersons. And uh, for, the, for the majority, uh, Senators... Cynthia Villar, Marcos, Alan Peter Cayetano, Poe, Lapid, and for the minority, Senator Risa Ondiveros. I so move, Mr. President. If there's no objection to the motion of the majority floor leader, all the aforementioned names are hereby elected as members of the Committee on Banks and Financial Institutions. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we nominate and elect the members of the Senate Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation, and Futures Thinking. The chairperson of this committee is Senator Pia Cayetano. Mr. President, for the members of the majority on the committee, I uh, move to elect Senators Alan Peter Cayetano, Po, Revilla, Gatchalian, Padilla, Mark Villar, and J.V. Ejercito. And for the minority, Senator Risa Ondiveros. I so move, Mr. President. If there is no objection to the motion of the majority floor leader, the, all the aforementioned names are hereby deemed elected. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we nominate and elect members of the Senate Committee on Civil Service, Government, Reorganization, and Professional Regulation. The chairperson of this committee is the distinguished gentleman from Cavite, Senator Ramon Bong Revilla. 
Mr. President, for the members of the majority, I move to elect Senator Senator Pia Cayetano as Vice Chairperson, Chairperson, and uh, with its uh, members, Senators Padilla, Gachalian, Cynthia Villar, Rafi Tulfo, and on the part of the minority, Senator Risa Ontiveros. I so move, Mr. President. If there is no objection to the motion, Majority Floor Leader, all the aforementioned names are here by el deemed elected as uh, members of the Committee on Civil Service. Thank you, Mr. President. As at this juncture, Mr. President, on the account of the world's uh, National Indigenous Day celebration yesterday, our distinguished uh, uh, Senate President Pro Tempore would uh, like to uh, just insert for the record uh, her um, uh, privileged speech, uh, Mr. President, and so I move that it be inserted. If there is no objection to the motion, may we add, uh, before we do that, we have Senator Tolentino raising his hand. I, I will just manifest, uh, Mr. President, that I associate myself with the uh, privileged speech of uh, Senator Lauren Legarda, considering that... It would be nice to hear, Considering no? that <laughs> the United Nations recognized that we have 370 million indigenous peoples in 70 countries, and the Philippines contributed, accounted for more than 3 million indigenous peoples, if I'm not mistaken. So I, I am honored to associate myself with the privileged speech intimated to me by Senator Ligarda. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, my dear colleagues, every night I have the opportunity to watch at midnight to 12.30, Dayao. And it is like watching a privileged speech every night of our distinguished colleague talking about arts and culture of the Philippines. Maybe instead of giving the privileged speech, she can give us copies of her show. Mr. President, uh, due to uh, <laughs> insistent, public, insistent demand. public demand, not only from the public, Mr. President, but also on the floor, the uh, distinguished uh, lady from Antique, our beloved Senate President Pro Tempore, uh, has already changed has mind. changed uh, her <laughs> mind, Mr. President, to actually deliver the the the, the said speech, Mr. President, uh, to, to also support the manifestation made by Senator Tolentino. Very good. And so I move that she be recognized, Mr. President. <laughs> We'd like to recognize the distinguished Senate President Pro Tempore, our distinguished colleague from Antique, the champion of culture and arts and climate change, no other than Senator Lauren Legarda. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Will I take off my mask? Is it safe to take off my mask? Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> I am utterly scared by COVID. Uh, yes, Mr. President, I was going to have it inserted into the record uh, due to many other concerns that all our colleagues would have to do after our official session. However, because of the statement made, by your honor, um, Senator Tolentino, and the request the of clamor, the minority leader and the Senate president, I will read a very short manifestation on World Indigenous Peoples Day yesterday. Kasi po, hindi po napapansin sa Pilipinas ang ating mga katutubo, maski na po 110 ang ating mga ethno-linguistic groups, at higit po sa 10 million ang ating indigenous people. My dear colleagues, I rise on a matter of personal and collective privilege. August 9 marked a momentous day for indigenous peoples all over the world and in the Philippines because yesterday we celebrated the International Day of the World's Indigenous Peoples and the Philippine National IP Day. Way back in 2015, we sponsored Republic Act number 10689 in this chamber, which declared August 9 as National Indigenous Peoples Day in recognition and protection of the rights and causes of the IPs across the country. Pagkalipas ng pitong taon, labis ko pong kinagagalak na makitang mas binigyan ng halaga ng ating mga kapwa Pilipino ang ating mga kapatid na katutubo. Every day, we see more Filipinos transforming their traditional textiles, their materials into beautiful contemporary pieces, such as clothing, furniture, artisan works, artworks. We also see an outpouring of public support for such creations. It is no secret that 
I, together with many of our colleagues, have a deep love and appreciation for these so-called tropical fabrics and native products. Indeed, today is a fitting recognition of our IPs who give meaning to our identity as Filipinos. As we honor our IP brothers and sisters, the bearers of our cultural diversity and their overwhelming contribution to our rich arts, culture, and heritage, may we also be reminded of how far we still need to go. Mr. President, my dear colleagues, nararapat nating bigyang pansin ang mga pangangailangan ng ating mga katutubong Pilipino at bigyang lunas ang kanilang mga suliranin, lalo na sa panahon ng pandemya. There are 110 indigenous peoples groups in the Philippines, with each community possessing their own traditional knowledge and practices. More than expressing our appreciation for them, August 9 should serve as a constant reminder that we should provide the needed support for IPs to strengthen their part in nation building. It is also a timely reminder for us to craft and promote measures that benefit our IPs and value their rights as we continue to protect our cultural heritage amid the challenges of modernization. The ways and means of our IPs may be considered ancient by some compared to those of modern society, but everything that defines us as Filipinos is rooted in its creativity, resourcefulness, passion of our forefathers. For these reasons, we continue to advocate for policies and programs that would give respect, recognition due to our IPs. We have the National Museum's Baybayin Gallery and the Malilika ng Bayan Gallery. We have dedicated efforts also in reviving the age-old tradition of weaving, creating the country's first permanent textile gallery, Hibla ng Lahing Filipino, and the traveling exhibition before the pandemic to destinations like New York, San Francisco, Tokyo, Geneva, Singapore, by our weavers and some of our IPs. We've also supported the schools of living traditions, as well as a documentation of indigenous and traditional practices. As a legislator, we have jointly advocated for the strengthened protection of the rights and cultural heritage of our IPs. Then in 2011, way back, we successfully organized regional assemblies in Baguio for the Luzon IPs, in Davao del Norte for the Mindanao IPs, in Iloilo for the Visayan IPs, and the first national indigenous cultural summit that served as avenues for dialogue with local and national policymakers as well as international institutions. As Congresswoman of Antique, and we have indigenous peoples, we have the Irenon Bukidnon, we have the Atis as well. We filed the resolution at the time to protect their indigenous heritage, but this was in relation to Cordillera garments that were counterfeited fabrics from abroad that copied Cordillera fabrics. Mas kina po tayo representante ng panay noon ay humingi po ng tulong ating mga kapatid na taga Benguet at sa Abra at sa iba't ibang mga may katutubo na kinokopya po ng bansa sa Asia ang kanilang mga disenyo na walang paalam. In my return to the Senate this 19th Congress, we filed several measures. Senate Bill 831, it underscores the role of our indigenous communities as partners in the conservation and preservation of our protected areas with their ancestral domains. We have the IP Resource Centers Bill, as well as Senate Bill 839, or the proposed traditional property rights of IPs, which seek to support traditional artists and artisans by ensuring that their rights are safeguarded. As a sign of gratitude for our work, the cultural communities of Mindanao, way back, adopted me as by Matumpis, which means literally the one who takes care. These are just a few of our um, strides in protecting and promoting the rights of our IPs, their culture, and their heritage. Despite these, 
there is still much to be done. Imagine how much more we can accomplish if we further prioritize programs and initiatives aimed in addressing the needs and issues of our indigenous communities. That is why, Mr. President, my esteemed colleagues, as we honor the rich and vibrant culture of our IPs, I also urge each and every one of us to rise to the challenge and join me as by Matumpis. Together, let us all be the ones who take care. And I know that Bukidnon has a very rich IP culture as well, and I have seen the Senate President and his father uh, promote their uh, indigenous peoples' uh, tangible and intangible heritage. The Bulacan uh, IPs, the Dumagats uh, of our, and, and Aurora also has the, um, Dumagats as well, the Dumagats of Bulacan, Dumagats Aurora. I can go on and on as well as a minority leader's um, province in uh, Misamis Oriental has IPs as well. So this is more than 110. With that, um, I thank you for your patience, for your indulgence, for listening to me once again. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. We are always honored to listen to your speeches because it is it makes us richer as a nation with your love for culture, arts, and our indigenous peoples. Thank you, Mr. President. We are... Um, uh, tinataas po ng ating kapatid na si Senator... Uh, yes, Mr. President. Um, uh, the, first, first on the list who, who wanted to uh, manifest or interpolate the distinguished lady from uh, uh, Antique is the uh, distinguished gentleman from uh, Davao. Uh, he moved that uh, we recognize Senator Bato de la Rosa, Mr. President. Senator Bato de la Rosa is recognized, a distinguished gentleman from Davao. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you, Majority Leader. Mr. President, I would like to take this opportunity to commend and congratulate our distinguished colleague, our Senate President Pro Tempore, Senate Pre Senator Lauren Ligarda, not only for her moving speech, but more so for her deeds. We all know, Mr. President, the folly of those who rely on words, but fall short in action. And I am grateful that our Senate President Pro Tempore's words shine a light to her life, one that is lived in full support of our indigenous peoples. She walks her talk. Ika nga, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator uh, Ligarda, for remaining true to your advocacy. And may we always uh, follow suit. I, for one, will always strongly support measures and programs for the betterment of our indigenous peoples. That's all, Mr. President. Thank you. Marami salamat sa ating kapatid and uh, of course si Lingan sa Mindanao, Senator uh, Ronald Bato de la Rosa. I would like to thank Senator Bato de la Rosa and Senator Tolentino earlier for their manifestations. Much appreciated. Mr. President, uh, uh, move that we recognize also uh, Senator, the distinguished gentleman from uh, BICO, Senator Robin Hood Padilla. Who Senator also would like Robin Hood Padilla, uh, 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 ating uh, and, uh, uh, Senador ng Bicol at ng Republika ng Pilipinas is recognized. Maraming salamat po, uh, Ginoong Pangulo, at sa atin pong pinunong mayorya. Bismillah. Nais ko lamang po sundan ang uh, napakagandang talumpati ng ating maganda, magaling, at tunay na representante ng ating mga katutubo. Ginang Senadora Loren Ligarda. Napakaganda po nung sinabi ng uh, ating Senador uh, uh, De La Rosa Bato, idol. She walks her talk. Ang ganda. Ngayon lang ako nag-English. Ha? She walks her talk. Uh, pero ang ganda sabihin. Eh. Uh, sa Tagalog, inilalakad mo po ang inyong mga sinasabi. Uh, po, ibig pong sabihin, eh, kayo po hindi nang bobola. Uh, uh, mahal na ginoong Pangulo, tunay na ang pagmamahal sa inang kalikasan ay tunay na pag-ibig sa ating kayamanan ng mga natibo. Tunay rin na ang bumubuhay sa ating kabundukan at karagatan ay ang mga paniniwalang pangkalikasan ng mga dugong bughaw na lumads. Sapagkat ang pag-aalaga at paggalang sa kalikasan sa kanila ay pakikipag-usap sa Panginoong may likha. 
karugtong ng kanilang pagkatao at pagkakalikha ang magandang kinabukasan ng inang kalikasan. Kaya't, mahal na ginoong Pangulo, itunutulak ko po sa lupon ng kapulungan na maisulat sa lathaan ng Senado de Republica ang aking manifesto ng pagpupugay sa talumpati ng ginang senadora mula sa lalawigan ng antike. Maraming salamat po. Lubos po ang aking pasasalamat sa ginoo na galing sa Kabikulan at sa Pilipinas, sa kanyang mga matatamis at malalalim na salita na galing po sa puso. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat. And gusto din po makipag- uh, Uh, interpolate or interpolate or manifest ang ating kababayan galing sa lalawigan ng Cavite. Senator Tolentino. Ginoong Pangulo, bagamat meron, meron po tayong listahan dito, ah, ako, ako po ay susunod po tayo sa listahan. Uh, magbibigay uh, pugay lang doon po sa mga nakalista. Ngunit uh, kung ang inyong uh, pagnanais ay uh, hindi po makikinig po ang, ako sa aking majority leader. <laughs> Minsan nakakalimutan na ko na hindi na po ako majority leader. <laughs> majority leader? I recognize Mr. President. I will rely on my majority leader. Majority leader, who would you want to go just, first? Just a short manifestation. Just a short manifestation, Mr. President, because I have to... With, with the indulgence of Senator uh, Ontiveros and Tulfo, uh, I, I Mr. Give, President, I move that we recognize Senator Tulfo. I give way to uh, the minority leader. Just to correct the uh, unparliamentary procedure I enunciated a while ago, a manifestation of support even before the actual privilege speech was given. So to reverse engineer it, Mr. President, I reiterate again my support to the uh, privilege speech given by uh, the Honorable Senator Ligarda and to place it on the record again, Mr. President, that, that I will refile the bills that I filed during the last Congress, two bills that would enable our indigenous peoples, our cultural minorities, to be able to enter the Philippine Military Academy and the Philippine National Police Academy, irrespective of height, Mr. President, irrespective of other requirements, so long as they represent and they are qualified to be a member of the said institutions. Ito lang po siguro yung magbibigay sa kanila ng equal opportunities para po sila ay makapagsilbi rin bilang mga sundalo at mga pulis ng ating bayan. Maraming salamat po, Mr. President. Maraming salamat po, ginong uh, Senador ng Cavite. Mr. President, may I request the gentleman from Cavite to allow me at the proper time to co-author the measure that he mentioned, allowing our IPs into the Philippine Military Academy. Easier access yes. to the Philippine Easier Military Academy us. and the PNPA. Philippine National Police Academy. Yes, Mr. President, uh, at this juncture, may we recognize our Deputy Minority uh, Leader, Senator Lisa Ontiveros? <laughs> uh, yes, sorry. My Deputy, our Deputy Minority Floor Leader, Distinguished Lady Senator from Panay and Republic of the Philippines, Senator Lisa Ontiveros is recognized. Salamat kaayo, Mr. President. Uh, would the, the good gentlewoman from Antique, my Kasimanwa from Panay Island, um, just indulge me with one question, uh, Mr. President, to follow up on her privileged speech? It's my honor and my pleasure, Mr. President, to answer the questions from my Kasimanwa from Panay. Salamat, Gid, uh, Mr. President, uh, good gentlewoman. Una, well, damo nga salamat for that uh, privileged speech. And as I mentioned, I have just one follow-up question. I know the good gentlewoman from Antique will uh, really uh, empathize with this question because she understands that the cultures of our indigenous peoples uh, are not just decorations to them, but are really rooted also, Mr. President, in their political and especially economic ways of life. So my sole follow-up question, uh, Mr. President, to the good gentlewoman from Antique is, at least in broad strokes, um, what uh, does she 
think is the current status now of our indigenous peoples in the Philippines in terms of uh, the actual recognition of their prior right to express or give free prior and informed consent when it comes even to national government uh, projects and programs. Uh, what is their status in terms of um, the magnitude to which they have been able to file certificates of ancestral domain claims or CADC and be awarded certificates of ancestral domain titles uh, or CADT, um, which, Mr. President, are some of the most important provisions provided by our Congress to indigenous peoples through the indigenous, pe indigenous Peoples' Rights Act, Mr. President. Thank you very much for those questions. First, the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act, Mr. President, was enacted into law long before all of us were in this chamber. And it is a decades-long law which should be implemented in favor, of course, of indigenous people. And that would cover the issues of ancestral domain, which has been the subject of much controversy uh, in some jurisdictions locally. We also know that the non-implementation of the provision of the IPRA law has led to some violence in um, past years. So taking seriously the IPRA law and really revisiting provisions which may not be implemented uh, is worth looking into. That is why I requested that this uh, speech which focused on their culture, both tangible and intangible, but does not mean that those are the only issues that uh, we should uh, protect insofar as IPs are concerned, be referred to the Committee on Cultural Communities. Second, uh, Mr. President, it's not just the ancestral domain and the physical land to which they belong, but the nature uh, and the environment in which they thrive, their caves, their forests, uh, their wetlands, which are all part uh, in some areas of our EMIPAS law, the expanded national integrated protected area system. In fact, there are more conserved areas that need to be enacted into protected areas. And so I'm sure that the minority uh, leader and the deputy would join us in the protection of more conserved areas, especially those populated by indigenous peoples. Now, in so far as the free prior and informed consent, again, that is already legislated. That is why when we saw two years ago, was it last year, that there were counterfeit designs of our IPs, I'm not certain, were they Itneg or were they from Benguet, whether Abra or Benguet, but I know that they were Cordillera designs of textiles which were being um, sold in a marketplace somewhere in the Cordillera. I'm not specifying the area because I have to be certain on the place where it was being sold. And the IPs felt slighted, to say the least, because there was no FPIC. And so we must uh, ensure that the intellectual property of our IPs be respected and documented. With the wisdom of our brilliant lawyer, the minority leader, perhaps we can see whether legislation uh, contained in the FPIC provision of the IPRA is sufficient or whether the bill that I filed on the protection of the intellectual property is actually needed. There was also an issue, I'm sure you are familiar with that, with an internationally known vlogger who utilized uh, the tattooing of one of our revered indigenous persons, uh, an, an elderly lady in Kalinga. I'm sure that our very well uh, followed vlogger senator knows what I'm referring to. I believe this was more than a year or two years ago during the pandemic and I joined a an online webinar regarding this. I will not say it any longer. I think the issue was resolved then, but there was no FPIC, I think. Uh, so 
they may not have been familiar because they tried to document the tattooing of our Kalinga uh, IP and um, Wang Od. Uh, she may not be she may not be a Manilika ng Bayan awardee or a Gamaba, but she is a respected and in a way a revered indigenous uh, person. So, having said that, and that's not the only, I can go on and on <laughs> of the tangible and intangible heritage of our indigenous peoples, all 110 ethno-linguistic groups, and see how their life, their heritage, their art, their land, physical land, uh, so there are, are desecrated, not respected, and perhaps their needs are not met. So we have a long way to go. Sabi ko nga, August 9 kahapon, ang kanilang araw, hindi lang sa Pilipinas, sa buong mundo. Pero walang nakapansin at siguro hindi mag-viral sa social media ang mga isyong ito, maski na higit na 15 mil sa Pilipinas ay katutubo. Kaya siguro dapat natin mas pansinin pa, gaya ng sinabi ni Senator Robin Hood kahapon naman sa issue niya sa Saba na parang hindi rin napapansin, maganda sigurong pansinin natin ang mga isyong hindi napapansin pero mahalaga sa ating sangkatauhan. Salamat po sa inyong pagtatanong sa interest na isyong ito and uh, I would like and invite you to join me in authoring the bill strengthening the FPIC, IP, FPIC uh, and strengthening the intellectual property rights of our indigenous people. Damo nga salamat, um, good gentleman from Antique, Mr. President, also for bringing up three more of the many issues that really attach uh, to uh, Her Honor's um, devoting her privileged speech to the indigenous peoples. Um, of the Philippines. First, she said, Mr. President, that too often our indigenous peoples in the Philippines are embroiled in controversy when they try to assert their rights uh, recognized by the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act or IPRA. And it is the hope of this representation that moving forward and that the Senate can assist in this process that more and more often um, decisions will be made in favor of the indigenous peoples as uh, stakeholders in national development. Uh, secondly, sinabi rin po ng uh, good gentlewoman, and I thank her for bringing up this important intersection between two laws, yung implikasyon ng aplikasyon ng INAI PAS law dun sa implementasyon ng IPRA. Uh, because again, Mr. President, indeed, may mga idinedeklara tayong mga uh, uh, protected areas na maaring uh, parehong area o may overlap o may intersection sa ilang ancestral domains, whether claimed pa lamang or um, actually subject na ng mga kadti o mga titulo sa ilalim ng IPRA. And in fact, Mr. President, good gentlewoman, meron din po akong inihaing panukalang batas, uh, ika Oh my gosh, I'm trying to remember the whole title. Pero ito po ay panukala na may pagkilala pa rin at may konkretong mekanismong um, i-mamandate para kilalalin pa rin ang uh, karapatan sa ilalim ng IPRA ng mga katutubong Filipino maging sa mga idedeklara nating mga uh, protected areas. And uh, last but not the least, Mr. President, napaka-interesante nung ideya ng good gentlewoman from Antique na mapag-aralan opo, uh, namin sana sa minority at syempre sa majority rin, yung posibleng aplikasyon ng FPIC o Free Prior and Informed Consent na nakasanaya nating isite uh, sa mga sitwasyon na may mga development projects na papasok sa ancestral domain ng mga katutubo. Tignan kung may aplikasyon din ito sa usapin ng intellectual property rights ng mga katutubo. Uh, in closing, Mr. President, good gentlewoman, sabi nga ng, ni Her Honor na we have a long way to go. Uh, mahaba din po at mas mahaba pa siguro ang PC o pasensya ng mga katutubo. Sila nga po itong nagsasabing ang kanilang ancestral domain ay kanilang 
tinitirhan, uh, pinagmamayarian at inaalagaan since time immemorial. So we can do no less and I'm sure uh, with the leadership of the Senate President and the inspiration of uh, Her Honor, na the Senate uh, can step up and step up even more uh, to this task. Damo nga salamat sa liwat. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Mr. President, uh, next in line is the uh, distinguished gentleman from Isabela, Senator Rafi Tulfo. I move that he be recognized. Our distinguished colleague from Senator, uh, from Isabella, rather, Senator Rafi Tulfo is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues and the uh, lady from Antique, recently po nakakatuwa na sumisikat na po at sinusuportahan ng ating mga kababayan ang mga likhang sining ng ating mga katutubo. Dito pa lang po sa Senado, nakakatuwang makita ang pagsuot ng mga lokal na likha ng mga nagagandahan nating mga kasamahan. Of course, nandiyan si Senator Pia, Senator Risa, Senator Nancy, Senator Aimee, Senator Grace, and of course, Senator Loren Ganda Ligarda. <laughs> and anywhere you go, you see people proudly wearing and using goods inspired by the works of our indigenous peoples. Several commercial enterprises are diving into this trend. Ang inaalala ko po ay may sapat ba na proteksyon ang intellectual property ng ating mga katutubo? Alam ko po na meron tayong Indigenous Peoples Right Act at may implementing rules and regulations na po dito. But it seems that there is no mention of a policy or framework on how our Indigenous people or Indigenous cultural communities are protected when it comes to the Indigenous crafts that have been inspired that have inspired commercial products. Bilang pinagkakitaan na ang mga prints designed at pinta ng ating mga katutubo, they should be duly compensated for their intellectual property. After all, their work is a product of their hard work and history. Sana po ay magkaroon tayo ng policy when it comes to this, to encourage the support of our local products. And possibly, it will be products that we could proudly import to other nations. But let us not forget our indigenous peoples and indigenous cultural communities. Sana po ay naikinabang din po sila sa paggamit ng kanilang likhang sining. Maybe our, community, our, maybe our committee on trade can look and analyze the current problems faced by our RPs and ICCs when it comes to the use of their artistic works in commercial products. What are the rules when designs are used or inspired by them? And maybe we can identify and correct the government agency that can best regulate and implement these policies. That's all, Mr. President, my dear colleagues, and I commend the very relevant speech of the lady from Antique, Senator Loren Ligarda. Salamat po. Um, Marami salamat. Mr. President. Yes, uh, Ako po'y lupus Ligarda. na nagpapasalamat kay Senator Rafi Tulfo sa kanyang pagbibigay ng suporta sa pagbibigay ng kahalagahan sa ating mga katutubo. Uh, binabanggit ko lang po ang Senate Bill 839, Traditional Property Rights of IPs, which seeks to support our traditional artists and artisans. Uh, I hope that this bill can also be studied by our colleagues. I know that it needs refinement and protection of their heritage. Uh, minority and my colleagues, I would be very grateful if you could help me study it and co-author it and at the proper time be heard by the committee of Senator Padilla. Thank you, Senator Tufa. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, before we recognize Senator Angara, Revilla, and uh, Ejercito, Mr. President, I, I would just like to uh, put on record, Mr. President, that uh, this representation uh, uh, join the call of our dear colleague, the distinguished lady from uh, Antique, Senator Loren de Garda. Yesterday, we celebrated the uh, National Indigenous uh, People's Day, declared as Republic Act Number 10689. And in one study, Mr. President, by the uh, by uh, PIDS or Philippine Institute for Development Studies, Indigenous peoples are grouped into 110 groups in the Philippines, and is composed of an estimated 14 million. People. I'm glad that the distinguished lady from Antique made mention about our uh, our pinagmamalaking uh, mga uh, dumagat sa aming lalawigan, sa Bulacan, at sa Central Luzon. 
uh, I remember, Mr. President, when we were in TESDA, we pushed for inclusivity yes. in technical, vocational yeah. education and training. And the distinguished lady from uh, Antigua had been our partner. Mm -hmm. And I would just like to put that on record because it opened so much opportunities for human capital development uh, to our country's indigenous peoples. And uh, uh, it allows them to uh, seek better uh, livelihood and uh, employment opportunities. And uh, since then, Mr. President, we have been very supportive of this. And we'd like to thank also the, uh, because after uh, Senator Ligarda being the chair of the Committee on Finance, it was Senator Angara who replaced her. And uh, I remember, Mr. President, during last year's uh, budget uh, deliberations, TESDA's uh, data would show that 269,505 indigenous peoples have been enrolled in TESDA. And from that, uh, from 2019 to 2021, uh, out of that number, Mr. President, 246,844 graduated. And it is because of uh, the uh, initiatives of our dear colleagues from this representation, Senator Ligarda, Senator Angara, and our colleagues. And so, Mr. President, in the uh, upcoming budget deliberations, I just want to put on record this representation will continue to push uh, for providing more expansive and inclusive opportunities for our indigenous uh, brother and uh, sisters, particularly access, Mr. President, access to scholarships in Tibet, and in uh, higher education. And I hope and pray, Mr. President, that the uh, incoming vice chair of the uh, Committee on Finance, who would sponsor the uh, budget of TESDA, would also uh, uh, help this uh, representation uh, uh, in pushing for that uh, particular initiative. Thank you, Mr. President. I, Mr. President, I greatly appreciate our majority leader reminding us of that very strong collaboration when he was ahead of TESDA and I was on my second or third term as senator. I think it was 2015. Yes. If I recall, it was in Intramuros where we forged an agreement. Yeah. We were in a yes. speaking engagement together. Yeah. May I just bring to the attention of our body, Mr. President, a small kingdom like the kingdom of Bhutan has a traditional arts um, school for all the arts and culture. And this is not just one technical training school. Mm -hmm. It is a four-year course, Mr. President, where they actually uh, uh, master, uh, whether it's the art of sculpting or painting, uh, any expression of art and culture. Um, that is the kingdom of Bhutan of, uh, by keeping their traditions alive. It's called the Choki Traditional Art School, but it, uh, there are more art schools than, than this one that I mentioned. I remember having visited it long ago when I visited Bhutan, and it is amazing how this little kingdom in South Asia protects, guards, and safeguards its culture. Wow. And it is the only uh, country in the world that has in its constitution a mandatory, if I'm not mistaken, 70% forest cover at any one time of its verdant forest. Is that not amazing, Mr. President? I. I, I, I'm so touched by, I've always been so, um, I feel connected with the Bhutanese people who respect their traditional and indigenous culture and who use it uh, for their tertiary uh, uh, their college studies, not just as a yeah. technical vocational yeah. school. And second, their protection of their forest that it is uh, mandated in their constitution. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, distinguished lady from uh, Antique. Uh, next in line, Mr. President, is the distinguished gentleman from uh, the province of Aurora, Senator uh, uh, Sani Angara. I move that he be recognized, Mr. President. We recognize the distinguished gentleman from uh, Aurora, one of the seven surviving families after the tsunami <laughs> that hit the province <laughs> many years ago. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President, Majority Leader. Uh, would the beautiful lady legislator from Antique yield to a few questions from this humble uh, representation, Mr. President? Yes, Mr. President, it is my honor to answer the questions of the chairman of the Committee on Finance, whose province, Aurora, has the Dumagats, among other IP groups. Thank you, uh, distinguished colleague, Mr. President. Uh, at the outset, allow me to uh, 
give praise, give great praise to our colleague for always highlighting the beauty of the culture of our minorities. I think it's a highly commendable uh, effort on her part. And uh, dear colleague, is it safe to say, Mr. President, that you have fallen in love uh, with the culture, the traditions, the, um, the beauty of the, the dress, traditional dress of our indigenous peoples, Mr. President? Yes, Mr. President, that is accurate. I have fallen in love with not just a traditional dress, Mr. President, but both the tangible and intangible culture. It could be culinary heritage, it could be their artisanship, it could be their songs and their dance, it could also be their rituals, Mr. President, it could be their written language, because we have various scripts and languages. We have languages as many as are indigenous peoples groups. In fact, the Commission ng Wikang Filipino is mandated to document and preserve these languages as, as well. If we have endangered species, we have endangered languages. So yes, uh, we love and value everything both tangible and intangible about our culture as Filipinos. Thank you, what a beautiful answer, Mr. President. This brings me to the meat of my interpolation, Mr. President which is to inquire if the lady has ever had a uh, paramour who is an IP. <laughs> that is, a, that is a, because uh, she's, she's fallen in love with the, everything that is IP. So I, I think there is, must be more to it, Mr. President. No, but I, I, I withdraw the question, Mr. Uh, no, President. No, uh, I, I, I withdraw the question, uh, Mr. President. The gentleman need not withdraw the question because I will answer any and every question, Mr. President. I will not shirk. I did not want to put her on the spot, the Mr. President. I am because, uh, used to being put on the hot seat, yes. Mr. President. So I withdraw the question, Mr. President. Uh, I, I answer it anyway, Mr. President. I am sorry to disappoint your honor, Mr. President, but this representation does not have, did not have a paramour who is an IP. However, I love and value and respect every indigenous people's culture and tradition and seek to keep it alive. Thank you, Mr. President. I have a lot of follow-up questions, but I will no longer pursue them based on <laughs> the uh, answer of our uh, beautiful how, colleague from Antigua. Thank you, Mr. How President. How about uh, to our distinguished colleague from Aurora, IP from other countries? <laughs> anyway, yes, majority. Floor yes, Mr. President. Uh, next, next on the list is the distinguished gentleman from Cavite, Senator uh, Ramon Bong Revilla Jr. I move that he be recognized, uh, Mr. President. Our distinguished colleague from the great province of Cavite, Senator Ramon Bong Revilla Jr. is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I will not talk about love about life. your love life, <laughs> Madam. Uh, Madam Senator, I would like to commend our Senate uh, pro tempore, Senator Loren Gandalegarda, for this very timely speech on our IP brothers and sisters. Uh, nakikiisa tayo sa ating mga kapatid na katutubo sa pagsulong ng kanilang mga karapatan, pangkalahatang kapakanan. Sila ang may tuturing na unang tagalinang ng ating kultura bago pa man ang pagdating ng mga mananakop. Hindi maitatanggi na malaki ang ambag ng ating mga kapatid na katutubong Pilipino sa pag-unlad ng ating bansa. Sila ang huminang at pumanday sa ating kultura at kasaysayan. Mga yapak ng kanilang mga ninuno ang unang dumaan sa lupang ating ngayong tinutuntungan. Mga tinig nila ang mga unang umaling, umaalingaungaw sa himpapawid. Uh, kaya naman sa pagkilala natin sa karapatan at ambag nila sa lipunan, nararapat lamang natutukan natin ang kapakanan nila. Proteksyonan natin ang kanilang karapatan, lupa at kapakinabangan. The respect and importance we give to our, our IP brothers and sisters reflect our love and respect for our history, heritage, and traditions. Ipinaabot po natin ang uh, pagpupuri at pagtaas na respeto sa bawat Pilipinong katutubo. Mabuhay po kayo. Thank you, Mr. President. Marami salamat. Thank you, Senator Revilla. Mr. President, last but not the least, 
is the uh, Deputy Majority Floor Leader, Senator uh, J.V. Ejercito. I move that he be recognized, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Uh, may we recognize the Deputy Majority Floor Leader, Senator J.V. Ejercito. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd just like to uh, commend our uh, Senate President Pro Tempore, of course, our Tita Ganda, uh, Senator Loren, for always uh, fighting and uh, always promoting the rights, the tradition and heritage of our indigenous peoples. Um, anyway, I, you mentioned also, uh, uh, Your Honor, that uh, um, uh, you went to Kalinga, no? you went to Kalinga also to province the Cordilleras. No, no, I don't think, uh, foreign. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, foreign just take that out. <laughs> Anyway, um, just for the information of uh, our, distingu our di distinguished lady from uh, Antique, I, I myself, I, uh, Mr. President, I'm an adopted son of Kalinga and uh, Mountain Province. So because of, um, of my uh, adventures... Did you also uh, wear Igorot outfit? Na bahag? Uh, probably when I have abs already. <laughs> so no, because soon, when, you, when they adopt you there, they, you wear the traditional dress. Yes, yes. yes. Because... Uh, it's not often that they are visited by national officials, no, because yes. of the of the, the distance, and it's quite uh, difficult to go uh, from Baguio. It'll take you another six, seven hours, no, probably yeah. to go to um, Sagada or Ifugao. Um, anyway, because of my motorcycle adventures, Mr. President, I had the chance to be able to visit these far-flung areas, um, and was able to help them, no, uh, in our way through this to our Senate. We were able to fund uh, some hospitals in those areas, in Kalinga, Mountain Province. So that's the reason that they adopted me. Not because I look like them, but because of what we have brought um, help no, to our Senate. And likewise, um, the, um, Your Honor, nabanggit niyo po kanina si Apu Wang Od. Indeed, she, uh, she is uh, a national treasure. No? She's the only living um, mambabatok. No, in tradition that uh, hopefully it will be carried later on by her um, niece or grand grandchildren. And when I was there, I had the chance, Mr. President, nagpatutunan uh, ako kay Apu Wang Od. I have uh, a tattoo kasi sabi ko, she will be a national treasure. Kaya masakit, medyo masakit. And your hand will be a national yes. treasure as well. Yes, here. Yung kanya signature na. May I know uh, whose insignia or whose no? initials? That's uh, Apo Wang Od sa signature. Yun, okay. Three dots. So, yun. Great. And uh, kasama na rin po yung ginagawa niyang ano, <laughs> sensor na lang. <laughs> but anyway, ano, ano niya yun eh? Parang uh, fun. <laughs> but anyway, I'd just like to comment again uh, our um, Senate President Pro Tempore for always fighting for our uh, um, indigenous peoples. And I hope, I go just one question, because whenever I travel by motorcycle, um, when I go to Sagada, when I go to Banawe, nangihinayan po ako, Mr. President, no? when I see, you know, Banawe is considered an eighth wonder of the world. It's yes. really beautiful. Yes. But it's sad to say that um, marami ng shanties, no? a lot of um, small commercial areas, uh, commercial uh, uh, establishments, are uh, have sprung up, yes. especially in the vantage points. Yes. Probably, if we can, if there is a way, uh, Your Honor, that we can uh, do on how we will be able to preserve the beauty, no, the uh, of the place. No, because it wonder to. Eh. Sana yung mga shanty, probably we can put. Um, dapat nipa or uh, or uh, similar to nipa. Uh, what do you call this? Parang fabricated. If we can look into that, so that we can preserve the beauty of. Um, of uh, Banawi, Ifugao, Sagada, so that, you know, the, the, the tradition and culture and heritage of uh, the IPs, no, from Kalinga, from Cordillera, will be, uh, will be preserved. Um, I am grateful to the Deputy Majority Leader, Mr. President, for bringing to our attention the need for our IP hospitals. I am glad that uh, in the previous Congress, Your yeah. Honor had made an amendment to create hospitals in Kalinga. In Kalinga and uh, Mountain Province. In Mountain Obama. Province. Yes. That's great. Uh, I assume by now it has been established and uh, it has been set up already, constructed and uh, used, utilized by our indigenous people in that area. In Kalinga, the Kalingas of course, in Mountain Province, that would be the Montauks and the other IP groups in Mountain Province, including Paracelis. I, 
believe the IPs of Paracelis, uh, yes, and bon the Bontox as well. Um, I am grateful and I hope that uh, healthcare uh, is brought closer to them. To the far flung areas, yes. In far flung areas where they thrive and where they live, although some of them, of course, live already in the poblacion, but bringing health care, health care closer, like the boutique sa barangay, uh, roving, uh, our barrio uh, doctors uh, can, uh, programs can be utilized to bring health care closer to our indigenous people. Um, I'm grateful also that you had mentioned about our living treasure, uh, Wang Od, who's still who's surviving the pandemic yes, and is still alive. Yes, she's 103 years old Yes, already. yes, and uh, you are fortunate to have that <laughs> insignia on your left arm, your left hand, Mr. President. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, probably we can uh, have a, uh, probably discuss later on, on how we'll be able to produ uh, preserve furthermore um, new, those places like Sagada, Ifugao. Yes. Uh, so that the Manawe. Uh, I know Manawe, you exactly. Because um, sayang, sayang, a lot of shanties now, view. Panayero. Eh. Sana if you can put the ah. or probably ask the provincial government or, or any authority that can really, that would um, require that uh, materials that that be used in the construction of uh, area uh, uh, houses or establishments around Banao Rice Terraces will be made of indigenous uh, materials. I'm glad you mentioned in 2012, I went down to one of the villages, not Bangaan, which is uh, more difficult to trek. I can't recall now the name of the village, which is uh, still quite a trek, but not as difficult as Bangaan, and I saw that some of their native huts, which they call, are no longer kogon, yeah. but yero. GI sheets, yeah. uh, I offered, in fact, I even allocated funds through, I'm not sure if it's uh, provincial or municipal government, but we allocated funds, but still they replaced it with yero because yeah. they claim that it is more sturdy which perhaps it is, but because the Kogon has to be replaced, according to them, within a span of five or 10 years, well, the Yero might last longer. So there is that, uh, huh, that uh, difficulty of yeah. um, asking them to keep it as traditional as possible. That is the challenge, Mr. President. But yes, to retain the villages in the most authentic way possible, it would be beautiful. And of course, not allowing uh, construction in public view site areas. Yeah, the vantage uh, points. The vantage points, yes, Mr. President. Um, that would be a local government issue and um, the mayors should be responsible for informal settlers in public areas that would ban the vantage point uh, of those views. I'm one with you in that. Um, yes, it's really great for tourism, for the public to see. And if we have eyesores in all these areas, nakakahinayang po. It's really beautiful until now, no? Uh, just like if you look at Mayon Volcano, even how many times you, I have uh, visited, just like Banawe, it's still beautiful. That I'm hoping that we can do something about this uh, later on. That's all, Mr. President. Uh, thank you very much to the uh, lady uh, from Antique. Thank you very much, our distinguished colleague from um, San Juan. And I think you were also adopted in uh, Albay one time, the Ibalong, di ba? <laughs> Pinabahag po kayo ni Congressman Salceda. <laughs> yes, uh, Minority Floor Leader. Just a thought arising out of the uh, exchanges. Because Apo Wang Ud's name was mentioned when yes. uh, our uh, pre Senate President Pro Tempore answered the interpolation of or the manifestation of Senator Tulfo. And then here comes the manifestation of Senator JB that he has a, the distinctive mark or tattoo given by the Wang living Ud. treasured Apo Wang Ud. And he tried to actually uh, show us his uh, left arm. So with the technology that we are using now, and with Senator Javis' uh, permission, is it 
uh, okay, is it doable that we take a picture of the said tattoo and make it part of the records of the Senate as part of the interpolation? With the, with the permission of Senator J.B. Yeah. Because he, he actually tried to show uh, all of us this, the said tattoo. Yes. So uh, it's the work of a, of a, of a living uh, national treasure. So I don't know, I, I don't know Mr. President, if, uh, if, we ca if we can do it. It is now actually in the records of the Senate with the statement made by yes. Senator J.V. But uh, if you want a photographic record, I, I see no problem with it. Okay, so... Yeah. Let's see if we can do it. Uh, and according I, to him, yes, other tattoos, but in yeah, other but that areas, one only, only, but other also locations. All, um, only with this permission, uh, Mr. President. Uh, 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 may I answer that, Mr. President? Because, yes. Uh, minority leader. Please go ahead. Wang Od had an issue with a vlogger who documented her uh, doing a tattoo uh, and uploaded it on social media according to her group without FBIC. Yeah. I'm not sure if that issue has been resolved then. The issue of Senator Ejercito Estrada is first, it was Wang Od herself who did it. It is on his arm and he is allowing us because she already did it to him. Uh, if he allows uh, that uh, mark, insignia to be uh, to be photographed. Of course, the one in his arm, not in private parts. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Which private I think, parts? I, I, th I think we are... <laughs> be Ms. more specific. Mr. President, I think we are very, uh, we are very clear. <laughs> there's, there's no confusion. Uh, yes. So, Senator JV wanted to show all of us, so let's, let's make it part of the uh, re records of the interpolation, uh, Mr. President. The actual yes, Mr. President, the actual uh, I have here with me the, the picture, the video. Mr. President, not just, the, by the, prim. Not just the tattoo, Mr. President, but the picture yeah. of uh, the great Wang Ud and our distinguished uh, colleague, Senator J.B. Ejercito. Okay, thank you thank very you. much for the record. Yes. But before we end the interpolation of our distinguished colleague, today, uh, well, yesterday, we marked that celebration of IP, IP Day for the Philippines in Indigenous Peoples Day, world. all over the world, if I'm not mistaken. All over the world. But um, we still are far, and I, th and I thank the distinguished lady senator for really highlighting uh, the cultural heritage that we have uh, with our indigenous peoples. But coming from a province that has a lot of IPs together with the other senators here, uh, Bukidnon, we have the seven IP tribes of Bukidnon, uh, uh, the Talaandigs, the Manobos, the Bukidnons, the um, Tigawanons, uh, Matigsalogs. Unfortunately, many of them, uh, Madam Sponsor, Madam uh, Senator, uh, Lauren, if you're listening. <laughs> Unfortunately, Madam Senator, my distinguished Senate President Pro Tem, are still living in abject poverty. Yes. They're still living in abject poverty and, and also, uh, skills development, and uh, they're also backward in terms of educational attainment. If you do a, if you do a uh, study, uh, you do not, we do not know if it is, uh, uh, if it's part of their culture uh, to be so, um, or, or the lack of the facilities and the opportunities for them to get this type of training and education. We have to look into it deeper because uh, many rural areas where we have IPs, as I mentioned earlier, still subject to abject poverty. Even some of them are not even part of the four piece. Because I even uh, had one time asked when I was uh, a congressman and a senator, why many of my uh, kababayans in Bukidnon are not part of the four piece program. And according to the D Department of Social Welfare, uh, DSWD, is because they cannot comply with basic requirements na for example education of the children etc yung yung pagpunta uh, sa mga uh, health centers for the re regular checkups so it is really sad because they are the ones who need it the most and i actually came up with an under, uh, with an idea that we come up with a special four piece program for the ips that they do not have to go through the uh, difficult requirements needed to be part of the Ayuda program of government. Kawawa po sila. 
So uh, also, we have to look into the plight of many of the uh, IPs where in inaabuso din yung free prior informed consent, particularly in companies that go into uh, certain areas, um, we have to find a way for the NCIP to brief us, and I've, this has been my pet peeve from the very beginning, because pag may pumasok na multinational company sa lugar nila, let's say, magtanim ng pinya, magtanim ng bananas, ang nangyayari, iilan lang daw ang mga datu ang nakikinabang sa binabayaran na uh, renta o royalties na binibigay para sa paggamit ng lugar na ito. Iilan lang daw. And karamihan daw ay hindi nakakatanggap nito mga royalties. So let's make it a more democratic process uh, siguro for all the IP. So we have a lot of concerns that we want to take up. Maybe uh, this speech can be, uh, and our, all our comments can be referred to the Committee on Cultural Communities para sa ganun, uh, Invitayin natin ang NCIP and we can ask them all these concerns, uh, particularly uh, the question being, have we been able to help the plight of our IPs? Since the first term that I've been here in 2007, since 1998 of Senator Lauren Legarda, I want to see if umasenso ba sila or gumanda lang yung ating uh, uh, recording ng kanilang mga cultural heritage. Pero maganda po yan, yung ginagawa ni Senator Legarda. She, she, she puts it front and center with her program and her show. But in reality, many still of our IPs are living in abject poverty. Sila nga umakit sa bundok at nagiging minsan ay kalaban ng gobyerno. Kaya uh, I think to honor our indigenous peoples, to honor the speech, of our distinguished colleague from Antique, is that we not only um, focus on the beauty of their culture and tradition, but also in their living conditions. Thank I you. think that is the best way to honor our IPs. And I thank you, ma'am, for putting this into our consciousness today, and that we may take it up in further hearings in the committees para mapaganda talaga natin yung buhay nila. Um, napakaganda ng mungkahi ni Senate President na yung DSWD 4P program ay magkaroon ng capacity building or special uh, 4Ps sa katutubo dahil hindi nila kayang fill upan or i-comply yung mga mahihirap minsan requirements ng gobyerno masalimuot. Opo. So I hope that can be revived as long as there would be no abuse of course and no corruption. But really yes building capacity of IEPs to avail of the four-piece plan, four-piece ayuda of government would be very helpful to them. Yes. Imagine that's 15 to 17 million yes. of Filipinos, Mr. Yes. President. Because the, we had the problem, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my dear colleagues, of the insurgency problem when we were discussing NTFL CAC at that time, very controversial measures. Yes. Ang sabi ko, Eh, paano naman hindi magagalit yung IPs natin katutubo? Hindi pala sila kasama. Yes. Ang iba hindi kasama sa four Ps. Dahil nga hindi makomply yung requirement na nag-aaral at ng anak. At uh, alam mo, these are subserve, uh, um, what you call the uh, farmers, yung, um, yung their gatherers, or hunter gatherers. Many of the IPs are, um, ano yung farming na yan? Yung uh, parang silang... Uh, lumilipat-lipat para magtanim ng kamote and all that. They always use the children to help them. Uh, nomadic farming. No? Yes. Uh, and so, hindi, hindi nila nakukumply. Sabi naman ng DSW, we cannot give you the four piece if you do not comply. So, they remain in abject poverty. Yung buti pa yung ibang four piece ay nag-graduate na po at uh, nagiging mas komportable na kanilang buhay. So, maybe we can look into that, uh, Madam uh, Senator. Uh, yes. You will be the future chairman of the Committee on Culture and Arts, and I think you are also Vice Chair of the Committee on Indigenous Peoples. Um, so let's look at their plight. The best way to honor them is to make their lives, uh, improve their lives and get them out of poverty. That's Marami true. Salamat, They're sir. perhaps the poorest of the poor and the most vulnerable because they live yes. in the mountains and by the seas, vulnerable portions. And so yes. at the proper time, perhaps the NCIP, National Commission on Indigenous People, can give us a report on uh, what programs have initiated, but this is a commission that maybe has not been very successful 
in alleviating yeah. the plight of our IP. So the Senate must come in and intervene yeah. on how we can help Fair them. Game. Thank you. I, I'm truly appreciative uh, for all the uh, comments, suggestions, uh, the interest you've put into it. Uh, I truly appreciate and I learn from our esteemed colleagues. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much, sir, dear Senate President Pro Tempore. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Majority President. Leader? And with that, I move that we refer the uh, privileged speech of Senate President Pro Tempore, uh, Se uh, Senator Lauren Legarda, together with the uh, interpolations and manifestations of our distinguished colleagues to the Committee on Cultural Communities. I so move, Mr. President. There being no objection to the motion of the Majority Floor Leader, it hereby approved. Mr. President, uh, one housekeeping, Mr. President, I am in the receipt of a letter from Senator Bong Revilla, the chairperson of the Committee on Civil Service, on the change of membership in their committee. And so I move to substitute Senator Robin Hood Padilla with that of Senator Jingoy Estrada. I so move, Mr. President. If there's no objection to the motion of the majority floor leader, therefore Senator um, Robin Hood Padilla is replaced by Senator Jingoy Senator Estrada. Jingoy Estrada. Hereby approved. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we adjourn the session until 3 o'clock in the afternoon of uh, Monday, August 15, 2022. If there's no objection, the session is adjourned until 3 o'clock of the afternoon of Monday, August 15, 2022. Please stay safe, everyone, over the weekend. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you, everyone. Salamat.